previously on Caddy Daddy Presents. It's here, Caddy Daddy's interactive video buying experience. When you see the product and a label, you can go to the label and click on it. That'll give you more information. Check it out. If you like what you see and you wanna buy it, just click on the buy button. That takes you to the online store where you have more information, what customers purchased, related product. You can go back and click the X and that will take you back to the interactive video. Enjoy the learning experience and the buying experience. Hey, it's John from Caddy Daddy Presents and Mr. Bob. We're here today to bring you some exciting news. This is gonna be our first episode of Suspense Suspension. We're gonna show you how the suspension goes and we're also gonna have an interactive video from now on. Everything that we offer for sale, you'll be able to have almost a one click to be able to purchase that product. Excellent, and so what we're doing is we have our chassis here and we're here at the shop at Caddy Daddy Presents. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to use the parts that come from Caddy Daddy and what we have here, and we're gonna start assembling the rear end. And then we're gonna move forward, this is the first chapter, and. In future episodes, we're going to get into doing the front suspension, start doing the air suspension, and then the disc brake kits on there. So come with us and let's go get this, uh, start yeah, getting let's, this let's set up. Let's get the journey going. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's make it happen. All right, so here on the table we have the rear control arm. What we have is you have one on either side of the rear end. And what we're gonna do is, these have been powder coated. And so we're gonna put the new bushing into here. What you'll notice on this particular model is that you'll have a hole right here without a flange and one with a flange. What you wanna do with the bushing is to start on the side that is without the flange and push into it. Now, even though these aren't symmetrical, what we wanna do is have this bushing end up be symmetrical within the arm. So if you see, we've made a mark right on the center, and as we press this into here, we will use that as a reference point in between here to get it right on center. To do that, you can see that we've applied a little bit of white grease and we're gonna use our tool, which is going to head and press that in. Now, the important part of this, if you notice the construction here, is you have a steel sleeve on the outside, the rubber bushing, and then another steel piece on the center. You wanna avoid pushing on any part of the rubber. So that's why we do have a piece that's gonna contact against the steel part because if you're pushing against the rubber and not the outer steel, you're gonna push the rubber right out of it and it will no longer be symmetrical. So this tool right here, which basically acts like a C-clamp, and right here it has a cushion which is going to sit on that, that flange on the receiving side. So right here we're gonna run this guy up and this is an important thing to take your time when you snug this up. And the best thing you can do is at first use your eyes. Make sure that this is going in there straight relative to your control arm at all points. So take a look around, look and see and make sure it's not gonna start in there cockeyed. 
because if you get it in there cockeyed, it'll never go in there straight or work properly or accept on the other side. And if you see over on the other side right here, this clamp allows it to push against the steel of the arm while keeping this hole open right here for the bushing to go through. You get it nice and snug on there, and then you need to use a little elbow grease. And now approximately it looks like that our center mark is ending up on the center in between the control arm. So let's go ahead and measure it and see how close that we are. Yep, I'd say we're right there. What do you, what do you look see from your angle? Mm-hmm, looks yeah. pretty good. I'll take it. And then you'd want to repeat this process for the larger bushing on the other end of the arm, which would require a larger cup to press against the larger diameter bushing. But the same process, find your center, and make it equidescent. All right, now we're looking at the other component of our rear suspension. It's an interesting setup on the early GMX frames. This is the upper control arm, also sometimes known as the wishbone, which actually sits on the center of the chassis and connects to the pumpkin of the rear end right here. So what we're gonna do is press in in a very similar style as the um, other control arms, the bushings, but they are two piece. What you're gonna get in a kit is four of these. It doesn't matter if they're left or right or inner or outer, they are like pieces. So we're gonna use the same tool that we used earlier. And what we're gonna do is once again, take this collar and we're gonna put this onto here because that's gonna protect and not push against the rubber inside of there. So we'll use this right here, slide this into here of our piece, put this up against here, and once again we did apply a little bit of grease to, to help us out there, and once again you just want to go slow at first and make sure you're straight. Do a little examination, use your eyeballs, how we look in there. Up a bit. Okay, right there. there, right there. Yep. So you just kind of—it's it, going to find its home. It's going to want to go straight. So if you let it get, if you give it a chance, it will try to find center on its own. So don't fight it. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't want to go, then check to make sure it's aligned properly. And another really important thing that I want to include is since these were powder coated, and you might have a rusty set or a set that you might have cleaned up and painted yourself, what you want to do is inside of here. Really make sure and clean any powder coat, paint, rust, grease out of there because all it's going to do is help you out. You can go in there with a little wire brush, a little emery cloth, make that nice and clean and you're not going to compromise the inside of it. It's just going to make your life putting this together easier. Now what we want to do when we sucked it right up into there. And be mindful that there mm. is a, it doesn't uh, bottom out fully, there is a slight gap. And that way that's going to allow you to put the other one and have them centered in there. Then what you want to do is take your tool, release it, and we're going to turn it 180 degrees. You, after uh, they, they're pressed in, you can always um, use your bracket to see that they're in all the way and that you have just the right clearance between the um, center of the bushing and the bracket. So we have the ball joint. There's the center here, and this should just drop down, and this is a replacement ball joint. The original ones were riveted in there. 
So if you're working with an original piece you're breaking down, you're gonna have to drill and grind the rivets out. We did this prior to it being power coated. So what we're doing is replacing it with our bolts, lock, standard bolts, lock nut, and standard nut. I'm gonna just drop those down through here. What's nice, it's a good, it's, it's a, not an interference fit, like when we were pressing the bushings, but it's a very tight fit, so it will find its true center. Alrighty, so once you have your bushings pressed into there, you're gonna take your bracket. There are two brackets which mount this control arm to the frame. Now they are symmetrical, they're like left and right, so you don't have to worry about that. But you wanna have the pocket, and you wanna put this on before you put it in the frame because it will um, hide, the frame will hide the bolt that secures this. So you wanna slide this on, and you're gonna take your bolt, and we actually use two washers on the grade A bolt and slide it through from the outside towards the inside. When you get there, then you want to secure it with your lock washer and your nut. And you want to get it nice and tight, but we, it'll be another um, bolt that once the car is under load and has all the weight on it, we're going to go and double check and confirm all the torque specifications. So that'll be in a video that will be uh, coming soon when we're a little further down the road with the suspension. I'm John. And I'm Mr. Bob. And together we are Caddy Daddy, Daddy Presents. Presents. I hope you enjoy what we're doing. We're all about giving back. And I hope you take the time to look at some of the causes that are near and dear to our heart. On this particular chassis, you have 14 points which already have a fixed nut built into the frame. What you want to do is just get the appropriate tap. You can find that size. So you always want to run it through once you have a nice bite. Run it through, few, turn it a few times, and always remember to break your chip off. A few turns, break your chip off. And that'll keep it nice and clean. And you'll be surprised what'll come out of there, but it's going to make your life a lot easier when you start assembly. All right, now that we've chased our threads, we want to connect these brackets to the frame. So we already have the nuts that are already welded into the frame from the factory. This is a shim that will go in between that. What that'll do is in the final alignment of the rear end, this will allow us to adjust it either by adding or removing, but we want to keep one in there right now. We do have the frame upside down, so that is why we have this orientation now where we have the flat part pointing to the sky. We want to slide this. We can actually start this with a few bolts. And because of the elongated holes there, we can slide that right in behind it. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is bolt up the brackets on the wishbone with the threads that we just chased. Let's get the help from a friend. And just get them started at first. All 
All right, so we're gonna lower the rear end here, the spherical ball joint. We're gonna just lean it forward. Right now, it's just an empty housing. We have the third member and the axles out. We have the supplied washer. Now this, and the nut, which does come with the ball joint. You can put your cotter key in. We'll slide it through the ground nut with the eyelet facing up and down and then bend your tabs of the cotter key to either side to lock that nut in. So as you can see, we've got the rear end housing in place now. I'm going to take our control arms and once again we're dealing with, since we do have powder coat and paint or if you're dealing with rust, sometimes it takes a little convincing, you know, and a friend to help you get these in there and lined up. In there, and you see, we're using our grade eight bolt from our kit. And we're going to come to the front. We're through. Then you want to fall. You've got your lock washer and nut going on the outside. And what's interesting is doing this on the outside, once you have a car body on here, if you ever have to service this, it's a lot easier to access it this way. And once again, we'll go back when it's under load and confirm all of our torque specifications. And there you have it, is the first part of our suspension is coming together. And so what this allows us to do is move into the next phases, where we're gonna start setting up the airbag setup, the lines, the front suspension, start assembling our rear end with gears, axles, and our Caddy Daddy disc brake kit. So I look forward to you guys joining us as we get this a little farther along. Fine Village is a great organization that gives back to the community. Check it out. You'll see so as well. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Sonnen Kirsten. We're here at the 2018 Vine Village Celebration, our major fundraiser here that helps fund programs that we run for people with developmental disabilities here in the greater Napa community. Vine Village was founded by my family and another family each who had children with disabilities in 1972. And we depend on donations from all sorts of foundations and individuals and businesses throughout our community to help fund these programs and this is our biggest fundraiser of the year.